Jimmy K here, Metal Voice. Look at this. The Metal Voice shirts are now on sale. Just go to the video description to find out on how you can purchase one. Metal! Here we are in Montreal, Canada, standing outside the Piranha Bar. And we're eagerly, eagerly awaiting Thor. Thor, I mean, where's Thor? Thor! Oh, there he is. Oh, and he's got the hammer and everything. Here he is. It's Jimmy K. Metal Voice. <laughs> How are you, buddy? I feel like I like this. So Good to see you. Sort of, all right, here we are. Thor playing Montreal, going to Ottawa, going to Quebec, and then more North American yeah. tour dates. Yes, more North American tour dates are being added as we speak. Uh, yes, and Hammer of Justice. The new Hammer of Justice. Hammer of Justice. That's what we're touring for. We did a month-long tour across the United States of America. Now we're happy to be here in Canada for the eastern leg of the tour. Montreal tonight, last night was Toronto. It was crazy there with the Raptors winning. Oh, yeah, the, Raptors. the fans went yeah, absolutely United. berserk. All right. So, but here we are in Montreal, so the Piranha Montreal, Club. Yeah. Finally get to meet John Michael Thor in person. Yes. And I told him, bring your hammer. And I'm proud to wear it. And he brought his voice. hammer. And I'm proud to wear the Thor shirt. Yes. Here we are. All right. So here we are outside. And look, it's suiting, right? Yes. I think it was a you who raged this destruction. That's right. I smashed this... the whole building down. <laughs> okay, good. So anyways, so, my hammer, so I want to ask you this. some questions here, all right? Yeah. There was an entanglement with Blackie Lawless from Wasp. Want to tell me quickly about that? Well, that's basically uh, what happened was uh, in 1984, we were playing the Lyceum in London, England, and uh, we had big props like lasers were shooting out of lion statues and, mm -hmm. and pillars, and, and they had the big buzz saw, right? Uh, you know, and uh, we were both, we both had hits on the radio. They had fuck like a beast and we had thunder on the tundra and uh so the it was a battle over the props really uh -huh. their management went against our management douglas smith who also managed motorhead and they were fighting about um uh, the the size of the props so like it, was, it, was, it was a props argument yeah my hammer is bigger than your hammer kind of thing you know? <laughs> <laughs> so whose hammer won <laughs> well you know we, we tried to uh do a settlement Okay. You know, and, and, and uh, we still had our, our pillars and our lions. And uh, then we, they, but then after we had an after party and they were kind of snooty. You know, I says, don't you guys get snooty with me? Why don't you go fuck yourself? <laughs> you know, I, I got, it got a little heated. What about Chris Holmes? I know Chris Holmes. I've spoken to Chris Holmes. Yeah. He was a pretty cool guy. I mean, he was pretty chill. Yeah. I guess, it, you know, it just got a little heated about the props. A, a silly thing, actually. You know? All right. Have you, have you talked to Blackie since? No. Okay. All right. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. What about Sir Bob Gildoff? A Commodore ballroom. What is some? What happened there with Bob Geldof? Bob Geldof, at that time, of course, you know, later he played for the Boomtown Rats, but he came over um, in 1973 and 74 to work for the Georgia Strait, which is uh, a weekly uh, periodical mm -hmm. in Vancouver, British Columbia. Um, so he was a student in England, and this was sort of his way of learning journalism. Okay. You know, because we're part of the British Empire and all yeah, that stuff. You know, and yeah. Commonwealth, you know. So uh, he came over and he <clears throat> he became a big fan of Thor. He oh. actually did two reviews on us, rave reviews and big articles uh, on Thor. He was a, Th a Thor fan and uh, later when he got knighted, uh, I, I later uh, met him when he was doing uh, the Live Aid uh, at the time of Queen and everything uh, uh, in England. Uh, so it was interesting to meet him in 1974 and he reviewed the Commodore Ballroom show uh, and then later uh, meeting him again 10 years later. So Sir Bob Geldof yes. is a big Thor fan. Big Thor At fan. At that time he At was. I don't know about now. But, what about J.J. Yeah. French? I've spoken to J.J. French, interviewed him. Yeah. He, he appeared on the Metal Avenger album. That's right. We had some really great stars on the Metal Avenger album. J.J. French was one of them. A uh, really incredible uh, performer. And I love the Twisted Sister guys. When I lived in New York, in the uh, late 70s, early 80s, they played all around the tri-state area. And none of the labels would sign them, and they were packing on every place. 3,000, 3,000. Yeah, and I actually, I talked about training with Dee Snyder. I trained Dee Snyder for a little bit there, um, because, you know, get the arms going up. And he looks pretty good, in good shape right yeah. now, yeah. So, um, 
<clears throat> um, yeah, so, so finally they went overseas to try and get the record deal, and they got the record deal from going to England. Yes, 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 yes. And, and, and okay, so J.J. French, good guy? Tremendous guy. Yeah, yeah. Tremendous smart, guy. Very smart guy. Very smart guy. What about uh, Fast Eddie Clark? Okay, he also appeared on the Metal Avenger album. The Metal Avenger! <laughs> Sorry, I get carried away. It's okay, it's all right, don't worry. This is Montreal, crazy stuff happens. Yeah, okay. Okay. I get I just get worked up when I'm around you, I think. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. <clears throat> what happened? Fast Eddie Clark. With Fast Eddie Clark, of course. Um, I was a great friend of all the guys in Motorhead, Lemmy, and Fast Eddie Clark, uh, and... Uh, filthy Animal Taylor. Fil filthy, yeah. And uh, the original guys, right? Because uh, we had the same um, uh, manager, Douglas Smith, and... Uh, when I lived in England, I used to hang out with all of those guys. So, uh, and Wurzel came in soon after that. But um, anyhow, uh, it was a real pleasure to have uh, Vast Eddie Clark appear. It was his last appearance, his last appearance. before he passed away right. on Metal Avenger. What a, and probably one of your yeah. best songs. Thank you very much. Yeah. I appreciate that. And, yeah. and of course, after that, all those, those guys I used to hang out with in England, they're all gone. And it was kind of strange. Recently, when we played Hollywood, I uh, went to the Rainbow, and there was Lemmy as a statue. And, I, and, and then all of a sudden I remembered, wow, I was just talking to Lemmy, and he played Killed by Death when he first wrote it to me. He said, John, John, you want to hear a song? And, Killed by death, <laughs> killed by death, and then... Did you he, hang out in his apartment, like, on, 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 close to the Rainbow? No, uh, in England, he, oh, he, in England, uh, he lived, okay. he, this is when I knew him ah, the most. Okay, okay. We hung out in England because we had the same manager, and I, I lived there, and he was, he was living on a houseboat. Oh. And so I'd go see him on his houseboat, and, and then um, we would have tea together. And it, oh. not, not coffee breaks, but it was tea uh, over at the manager's office. And, and what year was this? This would be about 1984, very, 85. Very, cool. Any other cool yeah. stories about Lemmy or Fast Eddie Clark? Mm -hmm. Just, uh, you know, the cool guys who were hanging out with each other. We did uh, concerts uh, together. Uh, there's uh, the Kerrang! Festival that in 1985 that we were... Uh, Playing and there was Phil Lynott played that night. Oh, Phil! Uh, and recently, his mother passed away. Yes, unfortunately, yes. Uh, tremendous talent and uh, Motorhead was on the bill and Girls School. Um, you know, it was a lot of uh, fun back then in, in the metal days. Yeah, yeah. But uh, well, you're still yeah. kicking butt today. What, yes. Last question: What do you think about this Dio hologram? This. this I mean, would you like to have a Thor hologram? Yes, I would. <laughs> yes, yes. No, I'm all for, for being creative. And, and in fact, I've been trying to get a Thor hologram going. Uh, <laughs> I, I do like the energy of the crowd, though. See, I can't escape that. Yes. You know, but then I could, I could have multiple tours going on, like with Thor holograms. I do have some Thor tribute bands out there, like Iron Thor. I don't know if you heard of them <clears throat> over in Germany. There's Legion of Thor in Brazil, cool. Zon Thor in Canada, um, so they're out there doing it. But you know, I, I'm not opposed to a, a hologram. But you, you, some people, John, you, you, ha you have fun doing this. That's what it is, right? A lot of people, you know, they go, "This guy really thinks he's Thor." No, you have fun doing this, right? You have fun no. being the character, right? I, I, you know, it's got to be fun. You know, tongue tongue in cheek and have a good time. You know, and, and I couldn't do it without these guys over here. Come on, just come over here, Ted Jedlicki. Yeah. Rick Fabio. Hey, oh, hey. Frank Soda. Frank you, Soda. You, you know what I love? I love the city of Montreal is kind of all looking at us in this construction zone. Yeah, as Frank Soda. <laughs> Watch out for the, the bricks that may fall They're from the buildings. They're doing an interview right now. That's right, an interview right now. So it's not live. It's recorded. Yeah. yeah. All right, there you go, guys. No, so Thor, are. on tour in North America and hopefully in Europe. Oh. All right, guys. Yes, all over the world. Watch the out, Thor. Thor Hammer. Thor Hammer.